Hello everyone, welcome back to 4J Music. In the last video about what to play for altar call, uh, I spent some time talking about some Spanish praise and worship songs, some of the artists that were really predominant during the time that I was learning how to play piano uh, in the 90s, uh, but also some specific songs that were really, really just impactful, uh, really good worship songs with great hooks and melodies and everything. The response was that for that was so, so good uh, that I may actually go back and uh, my, my intention was to just do three videos in that series and move on to the next series but uh, I think that I, I got a lot of positive feedback and a lot of people asking for this and that uh, that I may go back and actually touch up on that but I didn't want to skip my third video which was um, the one that I'm going to do today talking to you about direction of movement um, and so again we're talking about what to play for altar call and I know for a lot of you this is going to be very like basic uh, stuff and I'm like, dude, I didn't. I don't want to see this. This is not something that I, I, I'm really gonna grow from. Uh, there may be somebody that that does need to see this. Okay, um, so I'm gonna talk about two things. One, actual chord progressions that you can use going down or up diatonically. Uh, but then I want to talk about how to dress some of these up because if your chord progression that you're doing for altar call sounds very bland, even without changing too much about the chord itself. Uh, and just adding a little bit of melodic variety, you can make something sound way, way more interesting and you're not really changing much, okay? So I'm gonna show you exa uh, that second, but first, uh, let's talk about direction of movement. All right, let me give you two disclaimers really quick. Number one, uh, I'm probably not gonna show you anything that you don't know already. Uh, if you're a seasoned keyboard player, uh, you can probably fast forward through some of this. Um, the second thing is this, is that I actually have a, like, I know the camera, you know, there's only a certain pl place you can see, but there's a big pole right here where I can't really move my hands and do some of the things that I need to do to be able to play with better technique and fingerings and everything. So I apologize for what you're gonna see. Uh, the first thing I wanna show you again, direction of movement. We're gonna go downhill diatonically hitting every chord. Here's my G, D over F sharp, that's five over seven, six, Okay, then I'm gonna go five, a D, then four. This is another one where I'm gonna use an inversion of one over three. Then my two. Usually two goes to five. Typical jazz progression would go back to one, all right? That is a very common downhill, um, that direction, chord progression that you can, you're welcome to use. I mean, people do that all the time. Um, you can even substitute a couple of chords in there. Uh, instead of, you know, instead of the uh, major D, you can actually do, do a minor D sometimes and get, get that um, nice little different coloring there. So it'll sound like this. Here's my minor. Okay. And so I call that the, uh, when I think about the Lord uh, uh, progression there, because that's a really common one there. But uh, so that's one example of a place where you could substitute a chord. Uh, there are others, but um, really that's not what I want to talk about in this video. Uh, the other thing is I want to show you this progression right here, the four um, to five, three to six. So C, D, B minor, to E minor, okay? It's a really common chord progression, that little cycle back and forth. Is that you can also substitute certain chords. Instead of going to C, you can go to the two, that A minor versus the C, are, they're very closely related, so uh, they're almost interchangeable in a, in a progression like that. Uh, I'm also going incredibly fast. I would not play that chord progression that fast in an altar call setting. I'd, I'd go a lot slower, and I'd also break it up, and that's really where I want to talk about for, for a few moments. Um, I'm going to play just a generic progression that um, maybe, you know, if you are in the beginner level, uh, you know, playing for altar call, this is, might be what you sound like. So here's a G chord. D over F sharp, E minor, I'm gonna hold there for a second, then C, E minor, sus, uh, D sus, to the five there, resolve it, okay? Now, that's, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that chord progression, but everything I'm playing is so heavy. I mean, there's so many notes in there, okay? 
and and really you know there's a couple things you can do one simplify and take out a lot of the notes okay this right here is just as quarterly sound as playing everything you know with double octaves and everything i mean it, it's it's not it, it's it's overkill really so you can actually break up that and and do something like this so this is probably what i would do within that same progression So again, playing the same progression, uh, all I'm doing is I, I took out a lot of the extra notes. Then I came up with this little theme um, where I'm still playing um, within the chord progression. I'm just, here's my root, here's my fifth, here's my third. And then uh, using the, the, the actual diatonic notes or even the notes within the chord, um, five of the chords of fifth, and then I come down to the next, you know, to the A, which is the fifth, the five of the D chord. And then I go seven, three for the E minor. So every single note that I'm playing is part of the, of, of the chord. I'm just breaking it up. Okay. And something else that I'm doing, I'm actually, you know, um, a lot of people like to do this. They roll the chords from bottom to top. nothing wrong with that you can keep doing that but actually what I'm doing is I'm going from the outside in the last notes that I hit in the chord are the ones in the middle of, of the cluster right and so I'm actually coming from the outside in uh, it's something I'm notorious for doing it's not a bad thing I guess but it's just a little bit different and this is what I'm going for is different different can be good if you're using the variety the right way and so mainly you I want you to stay away from okay um, and so you can really play around with that I have a lot of different you know uh, ideas that that are different than what I did there um, play around with it and see what notes really sound good going holding over from from one chord to the other all right hopefully that helps out a little bit just to see that from overhead but on the very first chord progression where i was going down you can just do the same thing uh and hit, kick it in reverse go up uh the progression and play around with that as well um and and have you know similar uh options uh, i wouldn't go all the way to the five over seven i'd actually probably do something different there uh, where you'd end at the five and go back to the one. That five to one is such an important relationship in the scale. Um, when you look at the notes in your scale um, and you have, you know, that seven to one, when you have the chord built on the five, there's my D chord, that F sharp resolving to the G add such a resolution to that that's called a perfect authentic cadence uh whenever we have the the um in in the soprano line especially we have that we have that seven to one uh, any any spaces in music where you can find uh places to to do that um it's going to offer a lot of resolution and just makes you feel good on the inside just the way our western music ears are trained um to anticipate you know, uh, uh, cadences, that's going to be something really good for the ear. Um, now, I do want to also tell you, you know, a lot of this stuff, um, you know, do only whenever you're by yourself playing. If there's another musician playing with you, like a bass player, guitar player, uh, unless you've rehearsed something or you have you have a talk back microphone where you can tell them if you're going to go off script a little bit, um, then then just stick to a, a basic pattern on that in that situation. And I'm, I'm talking generally when it's just you and, and, and the pastor, um, you know, finishing up the sermon or whatever. These are really uh, neat little ideas that I've tried in the past. But the main thing is this. Think of, of the, the, the phrase, less is more. Uh, whenever I was showing you that little G chord, you know, walk down. Uh, and you're 
leaving a lot of open space in there. Uh, there's even open spaces between the notes as the intervals open up. Um, and so that that is something that, you know, you can really play around with. Um, anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I, I just really I hope that uh, you're able to apply some of this stuff. And if there's ever any situation where you're um, maybe not sure about something that I explained, uh, some terms that I use or whatever, please um, uh, just reach out to me. If you know me, you have my number, or my email, or whatever, uh, or just uh, leave, leave a question in the comments. I would love to be able to help you out and be able to have, have you grow. Uh, and more than anything, be able to have you have um, a, a good time of, of worship and a good time of altar call where you're contributing and, and being supplemental to what's going on uh, in the ministry and not getting in the way. All right, so be looking out for that next video. I'm going to go ahead and, and hit up some other uh, Spanish worship songs uh, and maybe expand a little bit on that idea because that's something that it's a big time go to more than anything that I do in this third video uh, or that I did in the, you know, uh, showed you in the first video. Uh, the second video of my, my altar call, um, what to do during altar call video is what I really go to the most. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Bye-bye.